All right. Managing Editor Politico, Anita Kumar. Dispatch Senior Editor Michael Warren is here. Hello, one and all. Hello, hello. Hey there. Um, this is the, the, I can't shake everybody's hand now. It's too big. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Anita, you guys wrote about this extensively in Playbook this morning. We knew this was coming because she said she was going to talk before the end of the week. Um, at some point, is there not a, something to be said of the timing? You talk on Thursday night before Labor Day weekend. It sort of goes out in one ear and out the other by Tuesday morning. Yeah, I would, I would agree. It's not, uh, Americans aren't fully paying attention on the long Labor Day weekend. It is the Thursday, not the Friday, I suppose. But, you know, look, she was coming down to the wire here. She had said she would schedule um, an interview before the end of the month, and she she came right to it. But, look, but what does it say to the relevance of the White House press corps? You know, president, presidents and presidential candidates interacting with the media used to be an hourly event. When I was at the White House, you'd sometimes see Donald Trump two, three, four times a day. You'd see Barack Obama at least a couple times a day and be able to shout questions. We are, are we now moving to a place where the politicians are becoming far less accept, accessible? Well, I mean, we've seen that with Kamala Harris. We've seen it with Joe Biden, right? Because Joe Biden hasn't done a lot of those news events that you've talked about. He hasn't done a lot of news conferences. And so she's following in the same footsteps. But look, if she felt like she needed it, she would have done it. She feels like she doesn't need it. She has some momentum, and she felt like she pushed it off as long as she could. Yeah, Michael, how much does she feel like she doesn't need it because... The White House press corps, that at times uh, used to be quite aggressive uh, in, in, some, in some circles, uh, Jim Acosta thinking about you, um, has not been nearly as aggressive with Kamala Harris or, for that matter, Joe Biden. Well, to give them some credit, I think it's been difficult for exactly the reasons that Anita pointed out. Joe Biden hasn't been there, has not been accessible. Um, I think a lot of the problems that Democrats were facing in the run-up to his withdrawal uh, would have been maybe solved earlier had he been more accessible and the, the press would have been able to see and been able to tell viewers and readers the problems that Joe Biden was clearly having with his, with his cognizance. Um, so, look, I think it's a good thing for her to be doing this interview. Um, I know Dana Bash, she's a, she's a good journalist, she's a good reporter, uh, she's fair, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, a, a, this hopefully will be the first, not the last, of tough interviews that Kamala Harris will be facing. And credit where credit's due to Dana Bash. After the, the debate, the CNN debate, mm -hmm. there had been an awful lot of talk by Team Trump that this wasn't gonna be fair and she and Tapper were gonna go after Donald Trump, and did not. They, no. they let the two debate, and we know how that ended up. Is there a fear by Kamala Harris's team that if you don't do these, there becomes so much focus on one that if things don't go well, you don't have a lot of options. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, we're still talking about her Lester Holt interview, and it was years ago, right? She had. Is it the one where she said, "I, I, I went I, to the border. I, I went to the border. And you didn't go to the border, right. no, but I haven't been to Europe or something yeah, like that." Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we're still talking about that one. She, she doesn't do them frequently. We're still talking about ones that ha happened years ago. I, I think she got to the point though where the story was becoming. You're not doing right, an interview, and she felt like she had to do it, um, and so in, to to get away from that. And you saw the the Trump uh, campaign really every day they were putting out a statement. It's X number of days. So I really we, we like were it, following it. Yeah, I mean, you know you can't you can't say that you're you're defending democracy and then the the group of people who are supposed to hold politicians to account you don't talk to. It just doesn't go this way. We had put this up based on your reporting. Um, before we knew it was Dana Bash, but I thought it was interesting. There's the traditionals, Nora O'Donnell, David Muir, Lester Holt, mm -hmm. Margaret Brennan, Christian Welker, Anderson Cooper. Then there's the friendlies, Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid, Alex Wagner, Blitzer, Stephanopoulos, Laura Coates, Gail King, Oprah. And the heavy hitters, Bill O'Reilly, Bill Maher, uh, put Chris Cuomo in there, Joe Rogan as well. All of these different options. What does the Dana Bash pick say to you? Well, I think that there were going to be some criticisms if she went with MSNBC or NBC, Pro probably MSNBC, right? There were going to be some criticisms if she went with a Sunday morning or a, or a, a morning show, I should say, that it wasn't a serious interview. That's not to say they're not serious journalists, but it's a different vibe there. And so she had to sort of go with another network. And so I think that's why she picked C CNN. Okay. And she felt like you showed a clip of Dana Bash and she tells it like it is. She asked some questions. She was a moderator of the debate last time with Joe Biden. And I think we'll see some serious questions from her on policy um, and some serious follow-up. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven 
unbiased coverage.